Thank you, Chairman. Um, and thank you for coming in, uh, Ms. Kenners and everybody else. Um, could I just, I was just struck by something, Ms. Kenners, you said to Deputy Harris there, that, uh, that it's, you're going to publish in the next annual report. Is this your hope to, that you're going to publish the salaries structure or the salaries? Um. I suppose what we're going to try and do here is to, is to um, find a way to provide as much information as possible to Deputy Ross. And if that's the um, SORP method, the SORP or, or whatever, it's, it's, we, are, we are actively working on this right now. And you say that the other senior management are supporting you in the yeah. crusade for disclosure and believe in it? Yes. Could, could we ask them if that's true? Is that correct, the ones beside you? Um, yes, we will be supporting that. And I'd also like to make the point, as we are 98% um, funded through the, um, the HSE, our salaries have already been provided to the accounting body as part of our service arrangement. In fact, in rehab care, every single post is counted and counted for and returned to the HSE, who is the accounting body. Could you like to tell us what your salary is then? What your remuneration is? But that's part of a process that's ongoing. No, but why won't you tell us, if you believe in it, why don't you tell us now? Well, I'm supporting the process, but there's a number of colleagues in relation to that, and there's a process in place. Just and your I own? Think, just your I own? Think, I think that's been explained to you already. Just, you don't want to tell us your own. Mr McGuire, no? um, Your own remuneration? I'm not a staff member. You're what, sorry? I'm not a staff member. Right. So I, um, You're on the contract? No, I retired last year, right. having okay. reached the age of 65. Okay. Um, I, Ms. Kelly? I, I'm here today in um, my capacity as a non-executive director of uh, Rehab Lotteries and um, my long association with uh, Rehab's Lotteries business, having joined Rehab 25 years ago in 1989 uh, to uh, manage the lottery business shortly after it had been established. Would you like to tell us what you were paid when you left? I'm here as a private individual. I'm no longer an employee. Okay. Ms. Kelly? Deputy Ross, I totally understand your question, where you're coming from. And we do deliver state contracts. We are a private company. But the salary and the related details do constitute personal data. And as such, as an employees, they do have a series of rights under the data protection legislation and EU legislation. The staff have a right sets out in the legislation and I'm not going to break their rights or break their protection. If I talk about my salary, I, I will be de facto breaching their confidentiality. So my salary has been returned to the bodies that fund us, two main bodies that fund NLN. Who are they? You're talking about force in the HSE? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could turn to the HSE. Maybe you could tell us what they're paid. Chair, it's my understanding that I'm here pursuant to the 2013 Houses of the Oireachtas Act and consequently I'm obliged to provide information that's available to me to you when asked to do so. I have the information. I'm not proposing to go through and read it out, but I am prepared to provide the documentation to the clerk who can then share it with the committee. I don't have copies for everybody. I should stress, however, in light of the conversation that occurred earlier, that we have had correspondence from the rehab group asserting its rights to confidentiality in providing that information to us. But it's my understanding that a request from the committee to me in these circumstances, in accordance with the 2013 Houses of the Oireachtas Act, would override that consideration and provide me with absolute privilege if I provide that information to you. If, as Chair, you think anything I've said is not correct, I'd appreciate your advice in that matter, but I do have a set of documentation which I can provide to the clerk. I'd never challenge you on that. Mr. Thank you, Chairman. And Chairman, could you, could I ask the uh, Mr. O'Brien as well? Could he provide us with the information on Ms. Kearns's salary over the last few years, over the last ten years? Uh, well, Ms. Kearns is not an employee of either of the entities with which we have a service level arrangement. Uh, we have service level arrangements with Rehab Care and with the National Learning Network, but not with the Rehab Group. And as I understand it, Ms. Kearns is not an employee of either of those two entities, although she does chair the boards of, of the said entities. 
equally um, the senior, the most senior posts, which are the two colleagues from rehab care to whom you've addressed the questions, are employees of the group, but because of their executive roles in relation to these two entities, which mean that in one case we're effectively funding at 84 per cent of the salary, and in the other case effectively funding at 23 per cent of the salary, they have returned that information to us. Okay, well, Chairman, could I, could I ask him to provide us with all information, information available about the senior staff at rehab that is, that is available to him? Yes, uh, my colleague, Mr. Mitchell, is about to hand the relevant documentation to the clerk of the committee. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and could I just ask Mr. O'Toole, are, are you privy to the same information? I don't know the information that Mr. O'Brien has, but uh, I did receive a letter from, or my colleague did actually, from rehab that set out um, salaries uh, within groups, and not individuals' names, um, for those associated with the National Learning Network, which is uh, the, the one that we're involved in. It was pointed out in that correspondence that the information was provided for a specific purpose under the Data Protection Act and could only be used for that purpose, um, save the individual um, agreement of the management staff, the relevant staff. So this is the management staff charge outs in respect to the National Learning Network. Provide that information as well. Um, I, 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 if there's overlap, I apologise, but it, could you provide it for us? Yeah, anyway? I'd have to get, um, I, I'm, I'd have to look for guidance on this where obligations under the Data Protection Act and my obligation to the committee as a, an accounting officer and how I balance those. I hadn't considered a question before today, uh, Deputy Ross. Uh, I got this uh, yesterday, and I, if you don't mind, I'll reflect on that. Uh, we will seek, of course, to be helpful to the um, uh, committee, uh, you know, consistent with, both, I suppose, trying to manage both aspects of our responsibilities under, under the law. Okay, I think that's really, when will you be able to come back to us on that? I will come back to you next week in relation to that. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, that's fine. Uh, Ms. Cairns, just, just to um, ask you, who's your employer? Is it, is it the rehab group? Yes. So that's where your remuneration is charged to in the accounts. Okay, the, what I say is this, is it's very disappointing. And I hope you understand it. I ask you, do you, do you understand it? that we've asked rehab in today because of what is obviously perceived as a, a massive lack of transparency. You, you're aware as, as well aware as anybody else of the problems in the charity industry and a massive lack of transparency. And I don't dispute the great work you've done. You've done. Nobody does. It's fantastic. And uh, of what your colleagues have done. But what we haven't achieved today is any opening up of that transparency which we're looking for and which was symbolized by your own salary of course and we, we know that and i wish you i i would ask you to think again we are specifically as deputy mcdonald said earlier we are specifically for the remuneration committee to come in for the chairman to come in and for the former former chief executive to come in and that was for specific reasons so that we could find out those matters which were exercising the public and which were also something which mattered enormously to us because we're looking at the charity sector. And you came in, instead of bringing in the people we asked you to bring in, you brought in three people we didn't ask you to bring in. Now they've said some very useful things in a different context, of course. But can I ask you why, for instance, why isn't Mr. Flannery here? Mr. Flannery, as far as I can see, he's on the board of one, two, three, four, Five of your of your um, of, of, of your company's subsidiaries or the, uh, and the main one. He's also on the board of the National Learning Network. Why isn't he here? Um, it is true uh, that um, once we had agreed to come in here on the three items that we we agreed to come in on, which is the funding from Solus, the funding from um, HSE and the Charity Lottery Compensation Fund. And we agreed to do that. And that was, it was on that basis that we came in here, we're voluntary here. Subsequent to us agreeing to do that, 
Um, by the way, I just want to clarify something. We, we did get an email seeking the Remuneration Committee and Mr Flannery. We have never been directly asked for a chairman who happens to be on the Remuneration Committee, but just to clear, clarify that. Um, the Rehab Group um, believes that the team to appropriately respond to the issues for discussion today where those three areas are sitting in front of you. And I think we have aptly responded to much of the detail that we've been asked for and will be coming back. Why do you think we asked the remuneration committee in? Well, to be quite honest with you, Deputy, um, you know, I, I, I'm not part Who, who's of... On, maybe you tell us who's on the remuneration committee. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but maybe that would help. Who's on the remuneration committee rehab? Well, it's, it's, it's not an I mean, all you need to do is it's very, it's very public knowledge. I mean, Declan Doyle is on our enumeration committee, Brian Kerr, who's our chairman, um, Hugh Govney and Liam Hogan are the four yeah, people on cool. the enumeration yeah. committee. Okay. But that's, that's available information. Yeah. And, 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 and why do you think we asked them in? May I say, um, it was believed that it was up to the rehab group to feel the team to answer the questions that we're here to answer today in relation to our public funding and the remit of the committee. And that the questions we were we were we were, and the, the, the questions we were being asked was in relation to National Learning Network, rehab care, and their charity lottery compensation fund spent. Well, I don't think that you know that that really is somewhat difficult to take because we are entitled to ask who we, who we think would be useful to us and for you to come back and say well actually we we decided the other people that somebody else would be is is somewhat absurd because it's quite obvious that what we did want to ask were the questions which this whole issue this whole meeting has has concentrated more than any others and that is about the remuneration and that's not just a prurient thing that's because the health and the transparency of an organization is decided by how much information comes out and where you're seen not to be transparent is on remuneration and, and we've seen it just now where your where your colleagues there have refused uh, to give what their salaries and we've had to extract them somewhere else that was that's important and that's important to the public as well and that's that's why we asked them in Plus, my two colleagues are not public servants they're not on the public pace public pay scale and they're not in public pensions they're entitled they're entitled by right and law of this country to their protection and privacy and that's where we are with this they are they and others are, are working to be to um, ensure that there's adequate disclosure in relation to their pay and conditions of employment and we said we would do that and today we said that we do that sooner than we thought I'd like you to let us get on with that so we can get this issue out of the way and I think that's very, very important that, that we do that. It is, you have seen, um, I would hope, um, nothing but goodwill from rehab to ensure that that is, that is now achieved as soon as possible and currently. And I'd ask you to, to do that in relation to the enumeration committee. I, as I said before, and I haven't ever got a chance to do this yet, but I've said it many times today, we're going to give the report albeit we, we need to just check if there's any issues that, that do need to be redacted, to the chairperson of the committee. I'm also very willing to go through the issues here today as, as to the methodology and how the independent assessors of salaries, uh, the independent um, organisations, came, came to their position. And so all of the information that you will need, I'm, I, can, I can provide that to you, and I'm, I'm willing to do that. Can we have the Hay report that you had that you referred to as well? Hay is many, many years ago. I, I, I'll, I'll check it. You, re you did refer to it in your statement. Yeah, the, the main the, the the main report is Tara's Watson. Okay, and when was that Tara Watson report written? Uh, the current one is 2014. Okay, it's, it's 2014. 2014. Yeah. When was it, when was it given to you? Um, 2014. I mean, it's in the last couple of months. Yeah, yeah. It was due for this year. Yeah. It was, and it was written, so it's, it's updated in the last few weeks? Yeah, there's, yeah. And it will take into consideration uh, the change to the DC scheme. So can we take it that there's an alteration in the last few weeks in your salary then? 
I, I have, you know, I have for hours here been asked questions in relation to my salary. I have given a full, a full report into my terms and conditions, Deputy Ross. And I think it's only fair at this, and, and, and I have said earlier on that, you know, I have gone I have gone all the way in relation to this, in relation to my terms and conditions. I don't. I really don't intend to 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 provide any further additional information. Could you tell us then, just very simply, was there a reduction in your salary this year? There was no. There was an increase. No, I didn't say that. Uh, sorry, I am. I am. Um, oh, no, I, I asked. Sorry to cut across. Yeah, fine, yours, I asked a very specific question earlier, and you gave a very clear-cut answer yes. that your salary, as we speak in this room today, is two hundred and forty thousand. Yes. That that is sorry, the yes. position. It wasn't changed by the Tower Watson report. Chairman, I I um, I have given I have given all the information in relation to this matter, and I've given an awful lot of information today as well, other information, and I, I'm really not prepared to discuss my personal um, details any further. Chairman, I, I find that very unacceptable. Okay, could you, could you help us with something else? <clears throat> because you put this in the public arena uh, yourself in your statement. You didn't take any bonuses for the last four years, isn't that right? Yeah. Did you take bonuses before that? And somebody asked me what it was, and, and I cannot remember. <laughs> 70,000? No, it was nowhere near 70,000. Where was it? What was it then? How do you I know it's no not? I, I, we don't... Uh, that is just... No, I, 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 I can't answer that question here. What your bonus was? I'm, it's years ago, Deputy Ross. Years ago. Deputy Ross, I, I know that Mr Purcell um, has to go away to another meeting. Yeah, so I have no purpose. Myself. And you might just we come back talk, to the recommendations. We won't interrupt now. Because well, I can come back if you would like. Before I, ca I can stay, I can stay for about another twenty minutes if that's any any yeah, assistance. And I'll come, I'll come session, back so in before yeah, we we'll allow him to continue. Yeah. And yeah. just by way of explanation, Ms. Kearns, the reason I'm allowing Deputy Ross to pursue the questions is because you said earlier about your salary and that you would waive the right to, to that. That's why um, that's what has opened the line of question because you made that comment earlier on. To the disclosure I did, Chairman, but yeah. I, I have, I've, I've had a load of questions in relation to that, and I would just think it's only fair. Now. I, I, you know, I've given out a lot of personal information, and I'm really not prepared to go any further on this. Well, that's fine, but the only, the, the, just to be clear about it, the, the information that we've been given is your salary, which is in the public domain before you came in. Deputy MacDonald, I'm not making an issue of this, but you said you waived whatever, the right to, to do that and, and so on, or to privacy in relation to that. Deputy McDonald asked a question as to the, I think it was 6,000. Um, and Deputy Ross is now raising a question in relation to what your salary was over the last number of yep. years and yep. if, if you had bonuses. Ms. Kearns has answered that she's waived all her bonuses and that she hasn't approached rehab to buy out uh, bonuses or anything like that. Just, just for to clarify it. That, that's what was said earlier on. That much is on the public record. Yeah. Now, okay. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Whether or not Ms. Kearns wants to talk about her 2009 bonus or whatever, she might provide that information if she doesn't know it today. Yeah, and that's that's and perfectly reasonable. If you could provide it to us, would that would that be clarification, possible? Clarification, uh, Ms. Kearns, that the in in answer to uh, Deputy Harris, you said that the um, salaries of the you know the other executives, uh, you were going to publish them in 20, this year, far this year. I just want to clarify that, because in another answer, I thought that maybe that wasn't the case. No, the, the, I, the case. I suppose to clarify that, um, we did say that we'd, um, in, the, in the statement that was issued, um, it was, we were talking about the FRS 102, and that, and, and, and as, as deputies have said, that's for 2015 and wouldn't be available till 2016. So what we're trying to, trying to do today is move that forward quicker and try and deal with it this year for all colleagues. Right, so you're going to publish it. Yeah, and you're, you're going to publish the 2014 figures, that's just to give a straight answer. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... And it, it, the, the, the I'm way trying to be helpful here yeah. to clarify the matter. So mm. the 2014 figures... 
will be hopefully be made available and they're working out. Yeah, but, we but have, the, we're working out the, the, the way to deal, the best way to deal with that because there's a number of ways you can do it. But the, what you'd like to do it as soon as possible. Yes, yes. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, could, we, could we get then, i tell you what I don't understand, that is, is what is booked to what in your company? In other words, you've got the rehab, we're talking today about the two, the two companies, the National Learning Network, and we're talking, we're talking about the rehab care. And then we're talking about the, uh, the rehab group as such, uh, the, the big group. Now the salaries, are they all, all the senior salaries, and I'm talking global terms, I'm not talking about your salary now, necessarily just a bit, are they all booked to the rehab group? A little charge to it. The, the, well, now you've just heard that um, yeah. charges are out to the, to the services as well. You've just heard that. Um, and the, the management team of the rehab group would be responsible for the totality of the activities right across the group, not just here in this country. Um, but on saying that, the, um, they are group employees. So the distinct, I mean, this distinction, the, the groups are so closely linked. Ones that can, they're, they're, they're wholly owned subsidiaries, aren't they, we were talking about. In what sort of a financial state is the, is rehab care? Rehab care? Yeah. Um, well, the, the accounts are, the, the accounts are here. Yeah. Um, and rehab care has um, debt in it, as you see, and it's also made some surplus. Uh, last year, not an awful lot, um, but it is underpinned uh, by the rehab group. Yeah, it's just, it says in the, account, in the accounts that the only reason it's a going concern is for that reason, is that right? Pardon? It says in the accounts the only reason it's a going concern is because it's dependent on the continued financial support from the rehab group. Yeah, but it, it, it's um, the, like the, the, the rehab group would have supported the establishment of rehab care. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's a basket case if it wasn't supported by... No, no, not Well, it says, it's, it says the financial yeah. statements have been prepared on going concern. The ability of the company to operate is going concern. It's dependent on the continued financial support from the rehab group. So on its own, it wouldn't survive, would it? Um, it I think that's because you're looking at it from a statutory account perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are loans in there as well. Yeah. But the, the rehab, rehab care... Um, you know, and it has made its surplus there last year, and it has made its surplus last year. And if we forgive those loans, there would be no issue for rehab care. Yeah, but they are there. Okay. Yeah, but the rehab, the rehab care is part of the rehab group. Okay, no, that, that brings me on to my next question. It's fine. And number 17 there, in the rehab care. Yeah, the rehab care accounts. It says the directors have availed of the exemption under financial reporting standard number 8. Related party disclosures, disclosures, which permits qualifying subsidiaries of an undertaking not to disclose details of transactions between wholly owned group entities that are eliminated on consolidation. There were no other related party transactions. Could you explain that? Sorry, could you tell me what page? Yeah, it's on page 14. It's item 17. Sorry, I'm holding up. Deputy Ross, what is the what is the issue? Could you expand on that? What are the related party disclosures? Well, I haven't got. I haven't got those. I haven't. I, I'm not in a position. Um, I don't have that level of detail with me. But I can actually come back to you on it. If that's okay. And with the value. Yeah, I, I need to talk. Yeah, just leave it with me, and I come back. I don't have that detail here. You've no idea what it is, no? The related party not, disclosures. Not for 2012. No, I, I need to. I need to have a look at that. Is that normal for there be to be a large number of related party disclosures? <clears throat> Yeah, there would be there would be um, 
there would be activity. Um, but it, would you mind? Or, I mean, uh, these are. Um, this is detail in the account. I need. To, I need to check out further for you. I mean, that's an important issue. Yeah. Is there any any of your colleagues know can they enlighten us? Issue with that information. Sorry. I said we'll have to provide you with that information. Sorry, I can come. I can't give you a value um, until I um, check back at the office. But I could say um, we would have small transactions that can happen. We could have small transactions, or it could be um, the recharge, the group charge. On a monthly basis, the rehab group will charge for obviously the portion of my salary, salary as relates to um, my work at National Learning Network, and also another of additional shared services that we avail of for efficiencies. We would have uh, group shared services, uh, obviously, because it's in line with uh, it's good practice to have efficient efficiencies. And various group companies avail to different levels of the of, of the group services. Okay, you, you provide me with details, though. That's that's all right. We, we, we it's a buy-in the services. Okay. That we couldn't necessarily afford ourselves. Uh, and, to, and, and the people who were involved in it as well, please. Thank you very much. The final question. Final question, Chairman. Sorry. Sorry, do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. Is just on the corporate governance of this, which is obviously a problem. I mean, the opaqueness of your accounts, I have to say, is extraordinary. And I haven't sorted out any of my problems here at all today because of your refusal to answer questions, which I've asked you. And I just I find this whole experience pretty worthless, to be honest. But the opaqueness of your accounts is one issue. The corporate governance issue, um, to what rules of corporate governance do you operate? How is the board, for instance, chosen? The board, you, well, you will have the memo on arts, probably, do you? Oh. Oh, well, we'll get those for you. The, um, the members of the, the, the Members of the organisation, the members are the board, and the board have terms of office. Um, they can't do any more. Um, and there's been quite a bit of corporate governance review on this a number of years ago. They can only do three years, of three terms of three, and they must leave. There's a, there are nominate the, the 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 there's a nominations committee of the board. Um, and they have a criteria for selection in relation to membership, and they seek out mem seek out um, people who are who who are suitable. And when I say suitable, I'm talking about a number of different things in relation to skill-based geography, and and many other criteria that are there. And they make recommendations to the board um, uh, uh, regarding people uh, uh, to be proposed. There is also an audit committee, there's a remuneration committee, there's practice committee, you can, if you look up, up our, annual, uh, our annual report, you'll, you'll, you'll read all about these things. Um, but they're all governed, all governed by the memorandum and articles of association that we can supply to you. It's basically self-perpetuating, it, it goes out and chooses another lot. Does it advertise? Do you advertise for board no, members? I, I, I haven't ever seen any not for profit advertise Deputy Ross. No, no, I didn't ask you yeah. that. No, but I, I'm just saying, no, no, we, nor, nor do we, no, in the no. same way as anybody else. But remember, they, it's not um, self perpetuating insofar as people have, a ter have terms of office and then they step down. And it's chosen by the last board. That's right. How come. It's not chosen by. Pe pe people are stepping down at different times. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The nominations committee puts it up. How come a former chief executive is on the board? What is wrong with the former chief executive? It's against corporate governance rules that you put a former, former chief talking. executive on the, on, the, on the board. What corporate governance rules? Is well, it? It's the, it, is, it is considered to be extremely bad, bad rules, in, certainly in the public accounts world, no, in the world no, of public, uh, public companies, to put a former chief executive on the board because no, of the difficulties of them having some sort of control after they leave. Well, anybody who would know me wouldn't necessarily agree with you there, Deputy Ross. But um, there is no corporate governance rule that prevents that happening. I don't think you're right. No, there's not. Well, I, I don't want to mention any high-profile cases, but uh, yeah. 
You'll but find in, her off. In, 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 in relation... Um, uh, uh, in relation to uh, our, our sector, I'm not talking about PLCs or that, or in our sector, there are no corporate government zones. And anyway, before Frank Flannery came back, he, there were, he had a good break for a couple of years before he came back. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. You're asked, uh, Deputy DC.